the podcast for the inquisitive diver. Hey there, dive buddies, and welcome to the show. Before I introduce you to my next guest, I'd like to highlight that we've started a group on Facebook. It's called Scuba Goat Network. This is designed to maintain a link between the listeners and the guests, something that we believe is a first in podcasting. So come and join us. Anyway, on with the show. Libby Sterling is a dive pro, a superb photographer, and a bloody good dive buddy that's addicted to podcasts. Perfect. Libby, welcome to the show. How's the sun shining up there in Singer Cairns? It's beautiful, Matt. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Good on you. Now, before we do anything, I want to know what happened at the show yesterday. Did you win a prize? I did. <laughs> yes, I was. Yeah, I didn't think I would this year. However, yes, I was successful and uh, I was awarded yeah, two prizes. So okay. That was fabulous. Well, you can tell me the prizes in a moment. Um, sure. To give a bit of a uh, background to everybody who's listening, Libby and I first met in 2017 when I was working at Tufi Resort in Papua New Guinea, and she'd won a photography competition and won a trip to Tufi. So we had a fantastic week together doing all sorts of photography, and I learned so much from this lady. It was fantastic. And it just so happens, I think it was actually the same competition that you uh, that you entered yesterday, wasn't it? That is correct. Yes, we have a, a local scuba club called the Nautilus Scuba Club, and every year they have an annual photo competition, and it's it's world class. It really is. So last night there was three hundred and seventy one in- images on display, <laughs> and it was pretty spectacular. And they they host it now at the Tanks Art Centre, mm-hmm. so it's like walking into a gallery of underwater photography i must admit when you sent photos the other day of, of the gallery I've, I've always had it in my mind from way back when that you've entered this competition and most competitions it's digital it's online or something like this and it's one or two photos hung on a wall the place is massive it looks fantastic yeah the guys did an awesome job putting yeah. it all together and this year it's been a bit different they've it's like all the photos have been on display for three weeks so normally they go up the same day, mm-hmm. competition happens and the announcement, and then they take them down. But this time they've kept it as a display that the pu- public can go to and oh, it's free. Awesome. It's, yeah, no, it was very impressive. And is this a, a competition that anyone can enter? Uh, you have to be a club member. And can anyone be a club member? They can, yes. Awesome. Pay your money. <laughs> Come diving with us? Absolutely, you can be a member. All right. Well, I think we might have to put a cheeky little link into the uh, show notes for the club. Absolutely. Happy days. Now, come on. What did you win? Tell me, tell me, tell me. I um, So I got a highly commended in the open behaviour category. Mm-hmm. So that's that was awesome. And I was, yeah, first place in compact portfolio. Ah, well done. And what with did you get? My- what was G7X. The, what was the prizes? Uh, well, this year is a bit different. So I've run a trip to um, up to Port Douglas mm-hmm. and diving on uh, Silver Sonic. Oh, a trip nice. for two on Silver Sonic. Happy because day. of the whole COVID, we can't travel, and you know the our sponsors, our overseas sponsors, basically, you know, they're doing it pretty tough. Yeah. So um, with the competition was all local prizes. Yeah. And local uh, sponsors. First shout for those local sponsors as well. Well done. Absolutely. And you mentioned it was a G7X that you took the photos on. It was, yes. I've literally just put mine up for sale today. I actually just saw that. So I've tagged a friend <laughs> who's very interested in buying one. So, Brilliant. Yeah, that's the one that I had camera. in Yeah, that's the one that I had in, in Tufi. It's it's served me well ever since. Yeah, no, it's an excellent camera. I've had mine for I don't know, six six odd years. Yeah. Crikey. Anyway, mm. oh, years. Let's back it up a little bit. Where did where did diving start for you? I uh, learnt to dive in 1983, so obviously I was very <laughs> young. And, uh, yeah, on the New South Wales south coast, a place called, or an area, Molly Mook, oh, yeah. Dollar, Milton, that area down there. Yeah. So I learnt to dive down there and I um, was obsessed pretty much. Mm. So um, used to help out on the local dive schools. I was really the only girl down at that time as well, you know, diving. 
yeah. at that stage. So you know, I was pretty quick. I got involved in uh, dive courses and worked my way up to dive master. Was working on the boats, decking on the boats, and uh, got my instructors in 1985. 85? 85. I was still not in high school. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I, you know, I was very young when yeah, all this happened. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> cool. And um, one, of the, one of the main things that um, I remember and struck me ever since is that you teach people how to be solo divers. I do. That's my absolute favourite course to run. Mm. Um and uh, I'm very lucky here in Cairns and that a couple, a few of the operators let some privileged locals solo dive, which is perfect for underwater photography. Mm. So uh, one of the boats allows me to train um, solo courses on their, on, their, on their boat. Okay. And what about someone? Passions of Paradise. Okay. I don't, yeah. I don't think I know. Beautiful. That. Well, when you come up, mm. we'll take you out on it. So fabulous day out oh happy days yeah i mean it's i need to come up I, the, the one time i've been up to cairns I, I mean, i've been in australia now what three years and the one time i came up we spent nine days there unfortunately it was over christmas so all it did was piss down for nine days yeah come yeah. a different time i remember you were up at port douglas i think weren't that's you? right yeah 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 because the missus is from cairns so she was on about all these locations we can go and visit and they're spectacular and amazing and no <laughs> and they are spectacular and amazing just not necessarily when it's raining but the reef's still good when it's yeah. raining that's all right you get wet anyway yeah oh well tell us about the reef i mean we've not had anyone on the show yet talking about um the reef up in cairns so i've been up diving up here probably 14 years i've been up here for longer but you know regularly diving for the last 14 years mm-hmm. um i go out most weekends mm-hmm. work permitting uh, it's still a really special place to visit. So when you hear those people go, oh, you know, it's just not the same, well, you know, would I still go out there every weekend? No, I wouldn't. Yeah. So um, there's there's not as many, since COVID now, there's not as many operators, unfortunately, but there's still, there's literally someone running seven days a week. Yeah. And the operators have... Um, permits or moorings to go to different reefs so depending on who you go out with depends on where you go for the day okay so and it depends i assume it depends on the length of the um liverboard as to whether you're like closer to shore or on the outer edge of the reef oh sure so we've got liverboards out of here as well so Mm. on weekends i go out on the day boats okay but we've got a few liverboards so um the boat that i probably go out on most out to Osprey Reef is Mike Ball Spoil Sport, mm-hmm. and that's we do that for a treat. It's yeah. pretty. Oh, like Osprey Reef is just spectacular. Oh, that is one of my favourite places to go. So everybody chirps on about how good it is. Oh, it's it's insanely good. Yeah. So it's a ex vol you know old volcano or extinct volcano, mm-hmm. and so walls you know drop down to black water. Yeah, in, insane. And just the fish and the sharks, the whole experience is really quite amazing. How does it compare to some of the dive sites we did in Tufi? Different. But coral cover equally is, you know, coral cover is definitely um, comparable. Have I had hammerhead sharks come right up at my shoulder (laughs) like we did in Tufi on that that dive? Uh, No, but certainly have seen hammerheads out at Osprey. Yeah. Um, but it's just – and it's a local dive for me, you know. I take my gear down to the boat and get on the boat and we steam overnight and go out to Osprey, yeah. have a few days out there and then either fly back via Lizard Island or steam back okay. via, um, via the ribbon reefs. And there's some spectacular diving on the ri- ribbon reefs as well. Yeah. So if, if you can't get out to Osprey, that's okay because there's places like Steve's Bommy, Lighthouse Bommy. Um, Cracker Jack, like just, and Pixie Pinnacle, just these pinnacles out in the middle of nowhere that's just fish attracting devices yeah. or minkies this time of year. Minky oh, whales yeah. head out there. I've seen some footage popping up on the minkies already. Mm. Oh. If you haven't done that yet, you need to do that too. I've got so much I need to do. 
But yeah. I've, this is my first day off crutches, so I'm, I'm getting closer to getting back in the water. Wow. So, oh, well, that's good. How are you feeling? I reckon maybe another couple of weeks, maybe three weeks tops. Wow. Watch out for those skateboards. Yeah. No, it's gone in the bin. I've upgraded the camera instead. Yeah, much safer. <laughs> what camera did you get? Um, I, I stuck with Canon, and um, I, I plumped for the um, M6 Mark II. Um, so it's um, 34, 30, no, 32 megapixel. Um, I was comparing it to the Sony's, but the the price difference to get up to beyond 30 megapixel in Sony is just insane. Um, so th- this was in the right price bracket, and once you've added on all the lenses and the the housing, then it's still within my price budget, you know. it's uh, Fantastic. It was going to get a little bit top-heavy otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I've just upgraded to oh, what you got took for? mine yeah, took mine for a spin on Sunday. What so um what you got? What you got? I got a Canon EOS R. Oh, no way. Okay. I I I am slightly jealous now. Not just the R, not the R five, not yeah. the big you know, the it's the affordable one. Yeah, yeah. I was so, gonna um, ask if you'd won the lottery for a minute. Yeah, no. <laughs> Wouldn't that be good? Yeah. I could actually do all my bucket list diving then. Yeah. Um. So anyway, whole new, whole new world. Yeah. Is it? So, is so much better. So much more challenging would be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've had the the G seven X for so long. I just know. I know how it works. I mm. you know know how to take the photos I want to take with it. Well, with the new camera. Mm. No. Yeah. So anyway, I'll get there. Yeah. I have a funny Up feeling I'm going to have the same. Once we get back in the water, it's just be 200 shit photos and one that might be okay. Yeah. Yep. For a while anyway. <laughs> and like you say, I did the, the 7X, I mean, I use that for, what's that now, four years, going on five years. It becomes second nature. You don't even look at the thing, is it? The fingers just mm-hmm. do what it, what you want it to do. Yeah, exactly. So, more learning. Any- yes. That's a that's that's a good thing. We could have our own internal competition. I'd take it two months from now and compare crap photos and see who's got the worst one. <laughs> I reckon I'll win. Trust me. Trust me. My next book well, not my next book, my first book is gonna be called Fish Bums of the Great Barrier Reef. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, anyway. Um let's go let's go back to the solo diving. Um because one of the things that um, has kind of been gnawing at me for a while now is um, it seems to be quite commonplace, more so here in Australia, for people, I mean, everyone's very confident in the water anyway, but for, for people to go solo diving. But the amount of solo divers I've seen that enter the water and they've not got a redundant system at all, they're just on a single tank and away they go. Um What's um, let, let's run over what the the course entails and what the benefits are, um, especially on the legal side of things and insurance as well, etc. Mm-hmm. So, what what does the course actually provide to the customer? So we go through. It really focuses on safety and and your safety because you're you're alone. Uh, big focus on air consumption mm-hmm. as well. Particularly if you're a photographer, I don't know if you've ever, you know, been there taking photos and then realised you've been there for an hour, hour and a half, and you haven't checked your gauge. So, did you, did you not hear Don's comment in the was it a couple of episodes ago? The most I, dangerous I animal in the world is the pygmy seahorse. Yeah, because you're const- constantly focusing on it and forgetting about the air. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Or the air, or your bottom time, um, your deco time. Yeah. So. Uh, very much along those lines, buoyancy as well. Also swapping between your uh, main reg and your redundant system and swapping back. And also um, deploying a SMB from depth. Now, I know, you know, over in places like Kowtow, Kow, Kow, how do you say it? Kowtow. Yeah, there. <laughs> um, you know, you guys are put, uh, your dive instructors, they're putting up SMBs all the time. Well, it doesn't happen that much. Well, certainly not in cans. Really, the only time an SMB goes up is when you're trying to, you know, at the end of the dive, if you want someone to come and pick you up. Mm. So 
it's the the practical part of the course is three dives, mm-hmm. and you've got to have all the um, you know all the equipment so redundant slate SMB reel, and the other thing it focuses on is actually communicating with the boat and and the trip director or the um, dive master saying. I'm, you know, I'm going in now. This is how long I'm going for. That's the area I'm going to, and I will be back on board at X time. Mm. And it's really important that you're back on board or at least on the surface signalling to the boat at the time you say, if not before. Yeah. And I can't stress that enough. And certainly everyone who does the course with me learns that how important that is because the the staff on the boat they've got emergency procedures and if we don't if we're not back when we say we're going to be back first five minutes they're like mm, they're not back yet and the next five minutes it's okay we need to start looking yeah. so um, it's really important that you do what you say you're going to do I don't care what we see we could have manta rays swimming all around us doing somersaults and posing for the camera you've still got to come back up signal the boat i'm okay and maybe go can i have another five minutes or and then go back down but at least they know where you are and the fact that you're all right Mm. you know solo diving up here or anywhere really off a boat is a privilege yeah and as I say to all my people as well, you know, just because you do the course and you get certified doesn't mean that a boat's going to let you do it because it's a big responsibility for them as well. Yeah, especially if you don't rock up again. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so whilst um, I love swim-throughs and, you know, going into caves and I do not do any of that when I'm solo diving Yeah. because I, you know, don't want to risk getting stuck or having some sort of issue happening. Yeah. So, I mean, there's going to be people who listen to this and, and you know, ah, it's all right. I don't I don't need to do all that shit. I did all that shit anyway. But it's it sounds like it's common sense, but you're actually putting a methodology to it. Yes, absolutely. Hmm. Um, and I've had some really experienced, you know, instructors, photographers do the course with me and they've nearly all of them have come back and said, wow, that's actually really changed my view on solo diving mm. and you know what it what it really means mm. and the things that i need to think about while i do it i suppose with professional well professional i say experienced divers those that are in the water all the time it is second nature to be in the water but those skills that we're talking about are actually faded into the distance you know they they were probably done x amount of years ago and x amount of hundred dives ago the likes of putting up an SMB. It sounds simple, and it is simple when you do it all the time. Mm. Uh, you know, you go back to trying to do it and staying in trim. Yeah, absolutely right. So, um, and I and you see that on the course because they, you know, they do all the dives in a single day, and usually the first dive, putting it up, all fumbling, and things are getting dropped, <laughs> and you know, um, trying to get it all right. But by the third time, it's perfect. Yeah. And it's all done, neutrally buoyant. And, you know, off it goes. Yeah. So, um, but it, it's a really good course and it's honestly my favourite favorite one to teach, probably partially because I'm teaching and working with experienced divers and people that can actually dive. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other important thing with it too, apart from the whole safety aspect, is um, focusing on your air consumption. So every dive you're doing some sort of activity where you're monitoring your air, air consumption. So you do a five-minute um, sack swim where you, you know, pick a depth and you swim for five minutes or just cruise along. You know, we, you don't actually swim crazily. Just cruise along as per normal mm. 10 metres but see how much air you use there. Yeah, and sack um, means? Um, surface air consumption. Yeah, so you tell them all the calculations on how to yeah. work out what they're taking. And they have lots of fun on the trip out. On the, on the boat ride out, they sit there with a pony bottle and they've got to breathe it dry so that they know how long it takes them to, <laughs> to breathe. Yeah, so that's always a bit of fun. Have you never been tempted to just fill it with a bit of helium just for the laughs? <laughs> I hadn't thought of that, actually. Have you done your ticket yet? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but... um. It, look, it's a, it's a fun course. People enjoy it. We link it in with their photography as well. Yeah. And 
Yeah, it's it's definitely well worth doing. Mm. And do you, yeah, I hope to continue to run it. Yeah, good. Do you, do you get people coming and asking for tuition on on camera work underwater? Oh, look, I think there's people that are way better at it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you've got the patience of a saint. We know that. <laughs> um, so I think one of the nice things about the the divers on um, the boat that I dive on mostly, so passions, and even, you know, a couple of the other boats, photographers, we all sit around and chat mm. on the way back. And so if there are other people um, that want to ask questions or whatever, they'll come over and sit and ask and we'll share. Mm. I have run the odd photography course, but they really I do feel that there's people better off at it than what I am. Yeah. So yeah, you're quite humble in that way, aren't you? I mean, look, and no one's going to see the background of, of of what I can see at the moment. But you, your photography is absolutely fantastic. Don't Thank knock you. it. Yeah, and you're winning, yeah, no, no, you're winning prizes. <laughs> yes, that is true. Absolutely, I've got to travel the world, so that's well, not all the world, but a few places in the world. Yeah. Um, but I really do see myself as a bit of a happy snapper, and I'm I just love taking photos, and I equally love editing them when I get home. And, uh, you know, spam Facebook and Instagram with them. <laughs> so. Um, well, um, speaking of photos and other photographers, um, you just had a little jolly down south, didn't you? And bumped into our old chuckle bucket himself, Don Silcock. I did. So I travelled down with a mate down to South Australia and dived with Rodney Fox. Oh, and on the Rodney Fox with Andrew Fox, mm. what a trip! You've so got to do it. Uh, and um, and Don and uh, Don and Jane Jenkins were on the trip, mm. so it was heaps of fun. And Don is so much fun, is, and so generous as well with his with his photography knowledge. So yeah. I had a couple of you know photography lessons on the boat, and it was just fantastic. So I'll be forever grateful. Yeah, good on. We'll have him back on the show soon. Once he's stuck, he, he's actually got to go down. In fact, he's trying to get back on the the Rodney Fox show, uh, trip again. Oh, I'm not surprised. Later next this month. is really good. Yeah, but I was I was speaking to um, Andrew well, a couple of weeks ago now. Actually, just before I hurt myself, um, so he's going to jump on the podcast I think in August and tell us all about the Great White events down there. It looked fantastic. It was such a good trip. I really didn't. Um, I didn't know what to expect. Like the friend that I went down with, this that was his fourth trip. <laughs> and he was just raving about it. Like, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. And I'm like, oh, what have I done? What have I done? Anyway, we did some dives. Uh, we did some shore dives first. Mm. So thank goodness we did that. The water was 14 degrees. I nearly died. <laughs> <laughs> so, when was the last time you were in anything below 20? <laughs> oh, 25 years? <laughs> Maybe longer. <laughs> anyway. And I'm just in a like a seven mil semi dry thing yeah. that was too big, so I've got layers of shark skin on underneath it as well. I was like the blimp, but anyway. <laughs> um, but the diving down there was spectacular. But the trip on Rodney Fox that was pretty cool, yeah. Like, but I just didn't know what to expect. Um, I had no idea it was going to be so noisy, you know. I just had these visions of you go down in the cage and you're down there, and it's all you know, like diving up here and the sharks just come out well it's not like that at all they're banging the cage trying to attract the sharks and there's bait just <laughs> swirling around you and there's fish everywhere and then all of a sudden this great white shark appears out of out of nowhere <laughs> like, or the, you know looking in the cage thinking oh there's lunch or <laughs> or yeah just cruising it around and around and you know oh, it was just an amazing experience yeah. and they're massive they they, yeah, they look a little bit beastie, don't they? they? Yeah, but they are beautiful. Mm. They well, really that that, that convo that I had with Andrew, he was saying how he's you know putting the right spin on sharks down there and and showing their beauty, and you can see that from his photos. It looks simply fantastic. Yeah, no, they really are magnificent. Yeah. So um, yeah, I can't. I, I always said I'll do it once. Well, I can't wait. I'm already I'm already looking at when when can I go again? Yeah. So, um, and diving with the sea lions. Oh, yeah. So cute. So that's <laughs> part of the trip as well as you dive with the sea lions. Well, surely the sea lions are the food yeah. source of the great whites, yeah? Mm, 
Yes. But you're outside the cage for the sea lions. Yes, no, you're over there with them. <laughs> That's all right. The only worry when they all disappear, you're like looking around going, where have they all gone? They <laughs> You just got to be able to swim faster than the person next to you. So that was my philosophy. Oh, we well, had done with you. So, yeah, you were safe. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, tr- fat, we had awesome weather. We had like glass out conditions some days. It was just beautiful. And the food was amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was very, very good food. I'll definitely get so, on that one. Yeah, you've got to go. It's a yeah, fabulous trip. And um, join it in with some jetty diving. For the great leafy sea dragon hunt. Oh, yes. So that's, I hunted. That's I did not see a huge any. bucket list. I've not seen them yet. Yeah. No, we looked and we looked, but we didn't see any. But next time, yeah. go back for a bit longer and we'll I've started reaching out to a few locals and saying, Hey, will you take me diving if I come back? Yeah. So That's what you want. You need a local that knows where they are, don't you? Exactly. And I think we missed a couple of places where they were. And then Don, of course, went up to Wyala and was diving with the cuttlefish. Mm-hmm. So that's also on the bucket list. I've been looking at his photos. Well, we'll think about going there next year, actually. This time next year. Yeah, it should be good. Maybe. Perfect uh, time. Yeah, you know, a few people here from Sydney and uh, uh, me and the missus. Possi- well, it's a safe assumption that Don's going to be going anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, very good. Come along, join us. But Ningaloo. Ningaloo. We've got to go to Ningaloo. Oh, hell yeah. I'm waiting for. Um, Waiting for Shep's boat to be all done. I think the. St- huh? I got straight on the website after I finished listening to the podcast. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, is it there yet? Can I have a look at it? <laughs> no, it's, it's not done yet. Yeah. I'm no. like ready to book then and there. I think it's. Um, I think they get it back November, December time, something like that. Oh, it's good to go November, December time, something like that. But mm, we'll see. Yeah, no, I can't wait. It looks amazing. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll plan on that for next year. We'll see. Libby, um, one thing we should touch on, talking about photography, um, is etiquette in the water. Oh, yes. One of my favourite topics. Mm-hmm. Let's iron this shit out and get it where it, yeah. where it needs to be. Let's yeah. talk about etiquette when it comes to photography. Yeah. I've, since I've become an underwater photographer, I was a little bit shocked. You've met me now. I'm usually reasonably polite. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, I'd get myself in and start taking a photo and then, you know, people just come up and push out of the way. Or mm-hmm. even worse, they come past and they start finning near you and stir up all the sand in, in your face and while mm-hmm. you're trying to take a photo. So um, some of the people I dive with, we've got a really nice etiquette. So if it's... Um, I don't know, find a moray eel, for example, and, you know, I'll take my few photos. I'll hear them breathing in the background, so I'll have a look and go, okay, so there's someone waiting, Hmm. and then I'll just move away, and then they come in and take their photos. And if I haven't got enough photos, I'll wait till everyone else has had their turn, and then I'll come back, one of the beauties of being a solo diver, of course. Um, But I think it's – I think diving and underwater photography etiquette is something – people should be a little bit more aware of. Yeah. We, you know, we all want to get a good photo, so we need to share and just be really conscious of our buoyancy mm-hmm. so that uh, we're not stirring the sand up all around whatever we're trying to take a photo of. Yeah. Um, all screaming up to the turtle and scaring it away. <laughs> yeah, before you even get a chance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I've got to admit if it's a turtle and I'm there, I'll... You're a turtle hogger. Always share. <laughs> or you'll find that you're in the photo as well. So yeah. I've, I've learned to get good at that, particularly up here, and that, you know, if there are other people around, then include them in the photo. Mm. Make it part of it. Don't mm. get upset the fact that there's two other people looking at the same turtle you are. Just make them part of it. Yeah. And on, on the on the arty-farty side of things, it can put a bit of, um, bit of artistic depth to your, your photo as well. Yeah, absolutely. As long and, as uh, long as long as said person hasn't just taken their photo and then kicked the shit out of the sand so that you've got a sandstorm to deal with. Correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But um, I'm very lucky. I dive with some fabulous people up here, and we're really good at sharing. Mm. And that's literally no. I've finished. It's your turn now. 
but I've got to admit I have been on some trips where it hasn't been like that and I've yeah. been literally pushed out of the way. Yeah, yeah. And uh, had that happen in the Philippines, actually, that was just shocking. I'd never seen anything like it. A whole group of divers just came through and pushed myself and the other diver I was with literally came in over the top of us. Mm. Mm. And pushed us out of the way to get what it well, they'd scared whatever it was we were taking photos off away by that kind of behavior. We had, we had similar here in Sydney a couple of months ago, diving at the steps, and there's um, a weedy sea dragon. So I lined up to start taking the photo, and all of a sudden, there's a body above me. It was like a UFO coming in, you know, just obliterating the sun. And all of a sudden, there's the, uh, the gut of sun annoying person over the top um, oh yeah it didn't end well for them but um, <laughs> I'll, my, I'll get my photo <laughs> <laughs> and um do they have so for the <laughs> i just had a, quite a picture then um <laughs> so do you have a code of conduct or a code of practice to, for diving with with them well you should do shouldn't you i mean we do i've got the the guys that i regularly dive with there's a there's a a group of us it's three three couples so six divers and you know we we do rotate through so if someone finds something they'll indicate it they'll take photos and then move out of the way for the next person to have a go so it's it it is literally um you know just communicating and knowing what what's happening uh, yeah, exactly. and, and being polite about the people that are with you mm. um but there are those dive sites that you do come across other divers and dare i say it, it's there's people that are you know, prioritising getting a photo over everything else, including safety. Mm. And joking aside, that's, you know, one of the most relevant points in etiquette is just make sure, making sure everyone's safe under the water, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And not impacting on the marine life either because mm. we actually want them to be there next weekend when we go back and we want to take photos. Yeah, yeah. Last thing you want to see is the fin in the head of the weedy you're just taking a photo of because some bugger's yeah. just come over the top. Yeah, yeah exactly. Or have them, you know, get so intimidated by all the divers coming that they move away somewhere else. Mm. Well, um, on a ghost pipefish, they do that. After a while yes. of, of getting it all the time, they bugger off. They find somewhere else to live. Yeah. Mm. I used to find that in Thailand quite a lot. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it happens here too. Yeah. Anyway, etiquette done. Done. Tick. Les lessons to everyone who's listening. Be polite. Yeah. Be safe well and enjoy. So, um, what's what's on the agenda, Libby? What's coming up? You got anything good coming up? I've got a trip on my ball coming up in September. Where's, where's that one going to? Osprey. Beautiful. Osprey Reef, Steve's Bommy, all those fabulous places I was talking about. You can't beat it. How long is that trip? Five days. Oof. Yeah, uh, that'll be good. But my day job's a bit busy at the moment, so it'll be... Weekend dives and a trip and then maybe something over Christmas. Yeah. So do you mind me asking what you do? Can you say what you do through the day? I can say what I do. I work for Queensland Health, so I'm in the public health system and I work in IT ah. at the moment, sort of, you know, project project implementation, project management, that sort of stuff. So you've been a, a little bit busy over the last 18 months then? I've been very busy. <laughs> very busy. So what about um, what about people who've not been to Cairns before? Um, what's it like for um, not only booking onto boats and day trips, and but accommodation wise and and the locations? Oh, it really is a fabulous place. Um, there's so much variety. So we've got a lot of air. You know, the whole Airbnb thing's pretty big up here, or you can stay in the big flash resorts. So mm. lots. And everything in between, so lots of uh, accommodation options. Things to do, so we've got, you know, the rainforest, we've got the Dane Tree, um, waterfalls galore. You can, we've got a, a, a train that you can catch up to Karanda. Karanda's like a, uh, up on the tablelands and a, I don't know, crafty, arty, you know, lovely cafes really nice so you can catch the train up there mm. and then we've got um gondola or the sky rail and you can catch that back or you can do it the other way around or you can just drive up mm. but um that's that's totally well you know well worth doing yeah. um 
even just a trip up to the Tablelands is beautiful. So um, you mentioned that some of the dive shops have, um, have kind of closed. Are they closed permanently or is it just temporarily? Well, the boats. So certainly not all the boats are working at the moment out yeah. of Port Douglas or out of Cairns. Yeah. So which is, you know, is a tragedy. And uh, and not all the liverboards are working either. So, oh dear. Um, yeah, no, it's not good. And it, it really did hit up here very hard. There's a lot of closed shops mm. and it, it really hurt people because, yeah. you know, our big industry up here was tourism. Yeah. And then, of course, every time something happens in Melbourne or Sydney or WA, you know, they're all booked on trips to, you know, go – Minkies or out to Osprey or even just day trips. And of course, then they're locked down in wherever they are and they can't come up. Yeah. yeah. And so there's a big knock on effect with that as well. And of course, no international flights coming in either. And I think it's going to be a while until we get some more, isn't it? Yeah. I, I don't really don't think we'll be traveling overseas next year either. No. No. So. Well, I, I put a curtain down on my travel agency, Nomadic Scuba. I just put a curtain over the, the website and I don't do anything now just it, unless it's return customers and good friends I, I, I don't get involved with new bookings it's just pointless not until we know what's going on yeah yep. make sure you go and have your COVID jab uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take if they say that you can't get on a plane without taking the jab I'll have it um, other than that I'm happy as I am yeah, you know, if I can if I can travel without it, I'll travel without it. But if I need it so I can go and travel and dive, then I'll take it. Mm. Yeah, I will watch this space. I think to see what they do. Yeah, have you had yours yet? I have. I work in health, so yeah. I was I was early. Yeah, so you you, you doubled up and all good. All good. Mm. Had it done. No issues. Happy days. So yeah, absolutely. So they give you a little certificate or something so you can travel yes. overseas. Yes. Can you photocopy it and then I'll just use Photoshop and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your mind, gun thing. Yeah, I don't think you'll get away with that. <gasps> oh, well, Good I time. tried, tried. Yeah, yeah. Go and have the jab. Yeah. Don't be a sook. <laughs> Doesn't hurt, I promise. And I even give you a lollipop at the end. No way. Uh, oh, I'm having it then. Yeah, yeah, you should. Through the shows that I do ask in line with the title, what is your greatest of all time dive? Libby Sterling. Yeah. Well, I have been, after binge listening to the whole, <laughs> all the goat podcasts in a weekend, I um, I don't know that I can just pick one, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I've got, I've got like five, five places, if you like, that are amazing. Well, I have to make it six now because Great White Sharks is going to come up there too. Right. But um, Osprey Reef is a, you know, that's a local no-brainer for me. Yeah. It's just fantastic. Are we, are, we, are, we, are we ranking these? Is Osprey Reef number five? No, I'm not going to rank them. I'm just going to put <laughs> them all in a bucket. But Truck Lagoon, yeah. I can't wait to go back to Truck Lagoon. Really? I just, I love Rusty Metal. Really? And it's just a photography mecca. Yeah. And easy, and easy diving. I always thought you were a fishy person. Yeah, I oh know. I love rusty metal. <laughs> Actually, that's another. The Ongala. Let's talk about the Ongala. Oh, go for it. Yeah. Because that's that's um that's definitely up there as best dives ever. So that's a six, six and a half hour drive south from Cairns. Hmm. And probably myself and a mate, we probably do that, or I'll just do it by myself for that matter. Um we'll probably do that, you know, four times a year. Okay. Finish work, drive down get there midnight, stay in the local caravan park down at um, Alva Beach mm-hmm. and then go out with Yongala Dive and it, it's uh, about 40 minutes off the, off the coast and it is the world-renowned dive site. Yeah. So it's a historic shipwreck but it's the marina and it's out in a shipping channel like it's got nothing around it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the marine life on it is just mind-blowing. So if, if it's out in the shipping channel then are, are you kind of – you know, reliant on the weather, obviously. If it's a bit choppy, then I, th- I guess you're kind of screwed. So if the wind's much over 15, tw- they won't go out if it's over 20 knots and maybe even 15 knots. And it's a, it's a small boat, you know, it's a rigid hull, semi-inflatable. 
Yeah. Although they've got a very nice shark cap, but if you're lucky, you get that. But um, that's a must-do. That's a must-do dive. Mm. It really is. And I, I highly recommend people stay and do it, you know, do it over two or three days because the first day you're like, oh, my God, don't know where to look. Yeah. And then for those people that only do it for a day, then it's over. You do two dives on it. Mm-hmm. But if you stay and do it, you know, two, two or three days, you really get to appreciate what's going on. Mm. And it's different every dive. Yeah, I had some, um, in fact, once I'd left Tufi and set up Nomadic Scuba, I took a load of people back to Tufi a year later. And there's a, a large bunch of those guys that are Aussies. And um, they went and did the Young Gala. I think it was last year. It might have been just before COVID kicked off. Or it was just as it kicked off. I think Jazz and I decided not to because it had done. But they said it was absolutely fantastic and saw the photos and there's leopard sharks and guitar sharks and all sorts going off. Big marble rays. Mm. A really big cod. Um, in whale season, it's I've seen photos and friends have had humpback whales hanging off the bow, like pretty much eyeballing them. Wow. That hasn't happened to me yet, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but schools of fish, huge schools of barracuda. How, like how it big, really is. How big is it? Um, hundred and something feet long, probably. Okay. So, and it's still it's lying on its side. Hmm. You're not allowed to. It's a historic shipwreck, so you're not allowed inside anymore. Back in the day, you could still go inside, yeah. but um, not anymore. And um, back you in the day, the it sounds wreck. like you've been in there, haven't you? Yeah, I have. But that was before. <laughs> that was before. Um, it was declared that you weren't allowed to. Yeah. Well, so, we're not, go- we're not um, going to get you into trouble. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's a definitely a must-do. And, again, you know, that's a local, well, kind of local dive site. Mm. But, you know, I'd totally go back to Tufi. Oh, yeah. But I think you'd have to come. I don't think it would be as good as that trip we had. That was <laughs> – I was insane, wasn't it? It was insane. We yeah. were so lucky. Well, we had it, fabulous weather. Yeah, Give everyone a backstory that, you know, it was 30-degree water and 50-plus meter visibility. And, yeah. Um, and Matt was so funny to start with. So, we, you know, we arrive at Tufi and there's three divers, uh, another photographer, and uh, I can't remember the other guy, but he was just there. Yeah. And, um, you know, you're giving us the drum about how the diving was going to work and and I think I said, so what's your idea of how close is buddy contact? And you're like, well, you know, we've got to stay together as a group. Well, by the, I think by the end of what, dive two, it uh, was all very relaxed. And I think we were doing 90-minute dives. It was just fantastic. Yeah. You could yeah. see us all. Yeah. But you could – the thing is when you you know, when you're an experienced – guide, instructor, whatever you want to call it, and you're in the water all the time and you get experienced, people turn up and you're in the right um, the right kind of environment, you know straight away as soon as they hit the water whether you can be a little bit more relaxed and give a bit of space for the photographers and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So, I mean, that week for me was fantastic because it was off the back of six or seven weeks of, you know, holiday divers that barely knew how to fin, let alone do anything else. So to have you and, and Catherine turn up, it was just bliss. You know, well, hang in the water and leave you guys to it and watch the fish that's going on. Yeah, no, no. It was fabulous from our point of view. Well, from my point of view, it was awesome. Because I think in the end, we talked you into taking your camera. That's right. So the three of us are down there <laughs> taking photos, <laughs> spotting stuff. So, no, it was just fabulous. So, mm. yeah, if I go back to Tufi, you've got to come. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I've been, I've been back before as well. Um, that said, I did the big group, and then I went back with, um, in fact, um, Shazzy's boat, um, Solomon. Yeah. The Rick, Solomon uh, boat, or a master, master, Solomon's master it is now. That's It's now getting yeah. swapped over to, it's kind of Chuck, actually. The oh, really? Chuck Lagoon boat is going down to Solomon's, and Shazzy's boat is going up to Chuck. Oh, uh, well, that's perfect. So yeah. I'll go to Chuck then yeah. and dive on my other favourite liverboard. <laughs> The Tacker, yeah. Yeah, um, I love that boat. Because yeah. that was here in Cairns. Oh, was it? To start with, before it went over there. Yeah. So I'd been on it been on it quite a few times. Yeah. 
and it's a fabulous boat. And, you know, Shaz's crew run a top, really quality product. Yeah. So were you on there when Adam was on, were you? Yes. I don't know where. Absolutely. He's kind of dropped off the face of the earth now. I think he's gone to St. Lucia or somewhere random like that. Yeah, no, he is. Yeah. I did a photography course with him too. That was fabulous. So I learned heaps from him. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, um, and because he's just done all his rebreather stuff as well. So he was in his full tech kit. Yeah. But there's an awesome dive um, over there called LaRue Cut. And yeah. usually, you know, you go in, go in shallow and go into the cave part and then come out again. And um, but because I was on the photography course with Adam, we just spent the whole like I don't know seventy minutes. Yeah. We got in trouble when we got back. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like, well, you know, he's he's the trip director. <laughs> <laughs> I think no, he got in trouble from Carmen. Yeah. But um, it was just amazing, like getting to spend the whole dive in there. He, he's really a really fantastic good. photographer. He is, and it's. I mean, I'm, I I must admit, I mean, I've I've known him since he was doing his. He did his open water and his advanced course at a shop I was working in, Thailand. I've known him since he was on his fifth dive when I first met him. And just seeing his progression and how far he's come is just fantastic. Yeah. No, he's fabulous to dive with, as is Carmen for that matter. Mm. So the first time um, over in the Solomons, I had Carmen as a guide and she was amazing. Yeah. All the other group I was on a club trip and all the other groups were a little bit jealous of those of us that, had Carmen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was really good. But definitely that's on the list, Solomon Islands again, mm-hmm. PNG, Philippines, you know, Analau. Okay. For, for some um, m- macro photography is not really my thing. Mm. I struggle with that, so I've really been um, practising. I'm more arty-farty, wide angle. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the Philippines for muck diving, just, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of places now for for muck. It's really good. I mean, there's the obvious ones like Lembe and Ambon, but I've been watching. In fact, I've got Elaine from Master Divers uh, on Kotao. She's coming on the show next week. Um, she's been out with a couple of um, other guys and girls on the island there while COVID's kicked in. And Kotao has always historically been a location where all the backpacking kids go to get their open water in advance and then go to the f- full moon party and you know, end up in an ambulance or something and bugger off to another <laughs> country. Um, but because they've not been there, the guys have been going out and, and diving and doing things differently. And they've just come across all of this fantastic macro. And it's yes. ridiculous. And I think mm-hmm. it's actually, and that's why I've asked her to come on the show, because I think it's actually going to change the attraction of the entire diving industry on that island. Because, yes, you can get the whale sharks at times and you get the... Um, you know, barracudas, that kind of thing. But on the macro side of things, if you want proper macro, you've got to go to Lembe or Ambon where it's it's not exactly warm water and it's the clarity's not great. Or, you know, unless you're looking for particular species, you can go to somewhere like Koh Tao, it's 28 to 30 degree water oh, yes. with 20 to 30 metre visibility. And you can stay there and just photograph macro in board shorts and a rash vest. Yes. Amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. Mm. Um, another great place to go, and these the, um, uh, people to get on the podcast would be, have you heard of the um, Raiders Hotel and Dive out of Honiara? No. Yeah, I'll, I'll put you in touch because it's incredible. Like that's on bucket list to go back there as well. Uh, what, for macro or what? Oh, everything, Rex, <clears throat> like Rex, but Mac, there's some macro, like they've got a little house reef out the front mm. as well. But not so, probably not so much macro. There's definitely a bit there, but as a, a great place to go and really interesting people. Yeah. Yeah. I've just forgotten their name. Cut that bit out, please. <laughs> but, um, Brian and. You, you were that remem- memorable, folks. Yeah, I, I can't know. Remember your name. Oh, yeah. they were. They were fat, um, just fantastic and really, really interesting backgrounds. Yeah. But for the life of me, I can't think what the name was. Brian and um, it'll come to me. It wasn't like Brian it. and Royer because that was two feet. No, no, yeah, no. Anyway, so please, 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 please cut the bit out that I've forgotten their names. No. Nope. Um, 
Do I get do I get editorial rights to hear this before it goes live? No. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Mr. Silent um, in his box behind the TV though. He's, he's smiling <laughs> and agreeing. <laughs> okay. All right. But yeah, no. Um, Raiders Hotel. Yeah, it, that, that was fabulous. So you're flying to flying to Honiara, mm-hmm. getting a taxi. Hope you're going to make it. <laughs> Go to this cafe. <laughs> And uh, Brian comes and picks you up in the dive boat and then it's about an hour's run across the bay. Oh, okay. Over to where they are and it's right on the water. Yeah. And I just had a blast. And he caters for all kinds of divers as well, like the full-on tech diving, deep rebreathers, the whole bit to, mm. you know, people like me to your average scuba diver. Yeah, so, hook, hook us yeah. up. Yeah, I'd be keen to talk to him. Yeah, no, tr- absolutely. Mm. And they, when you – when you have a chat with them about their what they've done in their lives, it's quite mind blowing. Yeah, because forgive me if I get it wrong, but Honiara is Solomon Islands, right? Yes, correct. Cool. So I don't need to edit that bit out. No. Um, so that would time in. I mean, if if people I, you get people from America and such that come such a long way to do a liverboard for five six days, whatever, and they end up usually doing two because there's there's not other options that are known about so having somewhere that's got that kind of infrastructure i'm keen to hear about because i want everyone in the world to know that those dudes are there let's yeah get, exactly. let's get them some income let's get them some money you know yeah absolutely and it you know it's it's um oh look i just loved it but what i did because of my flights and this is true story my flights didn't line up mm. with the getting on shaz's boat getting on taka so i had to go a few days before and stay a few days Couple of days after, oh, that's so a shame. it was a shame. <laughs> I don't think my boss believed me when I told her. But anyway, <laughs> it was true. So I um, literally got off the plane. Brian picked me up, went straight over to Raiders, and had three or four days over there. And then, literally, they t- took me over to get onto Taka. Yeah. So it was just fabulous. It, that would link in perfectly. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So and you know, great diving. And again, you know, Rex. I'm sure they've got coral too, but when they asked me what I wanted to do, I said I want to do the Rex. Yeah. What else is on the list? Have we done the list yet? I think we've done. So we've gone Osprey, Truck, Solomons, PNG, Philippines, and the Ongala. I think that's pretty good. And you've done all these already, haven't you? Yeah. But I'll do them again. (laughs) I'm sure you will. Um, Hopefully, but Ningaloo, we need to add Ningaloo to the, yeah. the to the list. Yeah, I think that's that's a go for next year. Yeah, I'm really like oh, on another already. trip back on Rodney Fox. Yeah, <laughs> it just keeps adding. What else is, is there? Anywhere else that you'd like to go? Uh, yes, I would like to go and do the um, the Biminis. Is it mm-hmm. Biminis with yeah. the dolphins? Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, have you done the Galapagos yet? No. There you go. Uh, it's, it's, I've it's got I've got spaces right. left in July 2023. I don't think I've got any kidneys left to sell. <laughs> <laughs> Not now that you've bought a bloody R camera. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll have to talk then because Very Galapagos much. definitely is on the list. Yeah. Oh, it's sensational. Yeah, but I like warm water, although – after the South Australian experience, I've mm. come back and a friend's going to put me through a dry suit course. Yeah. And another friend, I think, is going to loan me a dry suit. So, you know, Galapagos <laughs> might be there. <laughs> well, to be honest, in Galapagos, it wasn't that bad. Um, jazz, we did it in the April and it was like, it was meant to be 19, de- well, the computer was telling me it was 19 degree water. But I was, I had my, um, my tech shorts and I had the um, shark skin, long johns and long sleeve top. That was it. 19. 19 degrees. And, I, you know, it's a different type of diving because especially at somewhere like Darwin's, well, what used to be Darwin's Arch is now Darwin's Pillars, um, you, you, you drop in and, and shoot down to five metres and then work your way down the lava rock and you just lock onto a bit of lava rock for 45 minutes and you sit there and watch the show come past you. Wow. Yeah. So with I think maybe because your attention is, drawn so much because there's so much activity going on you don't notice as much i don't know but i certainly didn't feel as though i was getting cold like i do here in sydney what's the water temp get to in sydney too cold (laughs) um last year i think it got down to about 16 at some point yeah 
Yeah, but um, I live in Cairns. 18, 19, yeah, it's maybe 20 at times. It's not too bad. But it gets warm in summer, doesn't it? What, 24, yeah. 25? Yeah, if you can call that warm. I'm still not used to it. Been here yeah. three years and 24, 25, still not warm for me. <laughs> well, 24 for us is winter. Like it's 24 yeah. out there now. Yeah. But after South Australia, I felt it was quite toasty, really. Yeah. So and straight back into your long johns and bikinis. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, no, nah, I definitely had a five mil on. But, um, yeah, it was all good. Oh, well, I have to think about. Yeah, think about Galapagos. So you, um, I know we talked a couple of days ago. Have you got your website up and running yet? Or no. You've not? I'm going to talk to your friend, I think. Yeah. Thinking about other people that would maybe be interested in coming doing some courses with you. How do they get in touch with you? Uh, Facebook, really, probably. Yeah. So I've got a public, I've, yeah, I've got a, well, I've got Instagram. So I'm on Instagram as Libby Sterling Photography. Mm-hmm. So people could message me that way, and or yeah, via Facebook. Yeah, and it's until the website's up and running anyway. Libby Sterling Photography on Facebook as well. The public pages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, hey, in fact, the other way that people can get in touch with you is through the Scooby Goat Network on Facebook. That they can. Yeah, because we'll be putting this on there and sticking it into the the guides and categorizing it and all that kind of thing. Indeed. So if anyone's got questions about solo diving and photography, all that kind of stuff, you can always hit Absolutely. Libby up on that. I run a few other courses. I've got to admit, though, because I'm busy during the week. It's a weekend thing for me. Yeah. What's the other so, ones that you But do? if I can't do it, I'll you know put them on to other people who can. Mm. What's the other ones? Do you do oh. all, all of them? Well, I don't run open water anymore. Yeah. I, I leave that for people who do it all the time. Yeah. So I'm a little bit fussy. <laughs> you can afford to be picky. Let's put it yeah, that way. I've been doing it a long time. Now, yeah. So. <laughs> and I've got to be on, you know, I'd rather be out there taking photos, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's eaten. the thing that occurred for me when I was w- teaching all the time in Thailand and then got the job offer in Papua New Guinea. Everything changed because 90% of the people that came to Papua New Guinea were already divers and weren't interested in doing courses. Mm. They wanted to do phot- photography. Yeah. So I went from instructing to doing photography and it just changed the entire dynamics of what I got out of diving. It just took it up another level. It's brilliant. Yeah, no, it does. I, I probably wouldn't I probably wouldn't dive if I didn't if I wasn't into photography. Or I certainly wouldn't dive as much. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's it's the photography and trying to get that photo mm. and that fish face rather than a fish bum that keeps me going back every weekend <laughs> and gets you winning awards as well well done yes yeah. yes absolutely and turtles of course we you know we've got lots of turtles up here and i am a bit of a turtle fan i'm sure because that's the same bloody turtle that you photograph you know the amount of turtle photographs i see coming out of you it's got to be the same dude or do that <laughs> It isn't it? Uh, no, <laughs> it's not. Well, so some of them would be the same because they hang out at the same places. Yeah, yeah. But one of the places we go to um, called Club 10 on Milne Reef, and Milne Reef is a day trip reef. Yeah. And it is, it's one of the quality, you know, you know one of the quality day reefs that you can go to. Mm. And there's a turtle cleaning station. So if I'm quick... And I get in the water first and I get over there first, mm. like there might be a couple of turtles just hanging there getting cleaned. Gotcha. It's amazing. And then you've just got to stay calm and don't rush up to them. So I've got the stealth mode happening. Yeah. And they, you're right there, you know, from me to the wall away. Yeah. And while they're just spinning, while the fish are coming in and cleaning them, it's amazing. Yeah. Until the cavalry charger divers come across and scare them yeah. all away. And then I just swim away. Yeah. Just like, well. I got that experience. <laughs> Superb. Yeah. All right, Libby, we'll um, we'll wrap it up there, I think. And um, thank you very, very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It's been it's been heaps of fun. Yeah. And I look forward to Bin's listening to uh, the next few episodes. Happy days. You'll be listening to yourself next week. Yeah, and, I don't uh, think so. <laughs> I, look, I, I look forward to seeing a, a, a full fleet of crap photos coming out of your new camera for a while. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, we'll have to um, yeah talk again in uh, three or four months and see how we're both going. Challenge is on. <laughs> yeah, you're on. Libby, All right, thanks again. Thank you very much.
Goodbye, everybody. This is Scuba Goat Under the Sea, the podcast for the inquisitive diver.